Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher Ronnie de Guzman and our topic for today is Proving Properties of Parallelograms from Grade 9, Quarter 2. A parallelogram is quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. In the plane ABCD, if segments AB and CD are parallel to each other, and if segments AD and BC are parallel to each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Now, let's move on to the first property of parallelogram. So, that is in a parallelogram, and the two opposite sides are congruent. So, given that parallelogram LOV, we would like to prove that line segment LO is congruent to line segment B as well as line segment OB is congruent to line segment LE. So, we will refer our okay, proving on the illustration on the right side. So again, for our proof, we need uh, two columns. So we have the statements and the reason. For our first okay, statement, so we have parallelogram LOBE. So the reason is it is given. For number two, line segment LO is parallel to line segment BE as well as line segment OB is parallel to line segment LE. So we have definition of a parallelogram. For number three, we need to draw line segment LB. So we have what we call line postulate for our reason. For number four, we have angle LOB is congruent to angle DEL as well as angle LEO is congruent to angle BOE. So we have number four, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then an alternate interior angles are congruent. So let's continue with our proof for number 5. So our statement number 5 is line segment LB is congruent to line segment BL. Our reason is we have reflexive property. For number 6, we have triangle LOB is congruent to triangle BEL. For our reason, that is angle side angle or ASA congruence postulate. Therefore, we can say that line segment LO is congruent to line segment BE, which is also line segment uh, OB is the same also as line segment LE. Again, our reason is corresponding parts of the congruent triangles are congruent. In short, that is CP, CDC. Let's move on to the second property of parallelogram. So that is in a parallelogram and the two opposite angles are congruent. So we have our illustration on the right side. So the given are parallelogram LOB with diagonal line segment LB. So we would like to prove that angle O is congruent to angle E as well as angle L is congruent to angle B. For our statement number one, so we have parallelogram LOBE with diagonal line segment LB. So that is given for our reason. Number two, line segment LO is parallel to line segment BE as well as line segment OB is parallel to line segment LE. So our reason is definition of a parallelogram. For number three statement, angle two is congruent to angle three as well as angle one is congruent to angle four. So we have actually if two parallel lines cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. Moving on for statement number four. Line segment LB is congruent to line segment BL, so our reason is reflexive property. For number five, triangle LEBE is congruent to triangle DOL. We can say that angle side angle congruence postulate or ASS or ASA congruence postulate. And for number 6, angle O is congruent to angle E as well as angle L is congruent to angle B. Our reason is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So that is for property number 2. 
So let's move on to the third property of parallelogram. So that is in the parallelogram and the two opposite angles are supplementary. So we have the given parallelogram LOPE. So let's, let's refer to the illustration on the right side. So we would like to prove angle L and angle R are supplementary. Angle L and angle A are supplementary. Angle O and angle B are supplementary as well as angle B and angle E are supplementary. For our statement number one, parallelogram LOBE, so that is given for our reason number one. Number two, line segment LO is parallel to line segment BE as well as line segment OB is parallel to line segment LE and our reason is definition of a parallelogram. For number three, Angle L and angle O are supplementary. For our reason, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then same side interior angles are supplementary. For statement number four, angle L is congruent to angle B, as well as angle O is congruent to angle E. For our reason, opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. And finally, angle B and angle E are supplementary. So we can say that an angle that is supplementary to one of two congruent angles is supplementary to other also. So this, this prove also the statements above. So that is for property number three of parallelogram. So let's move on to the fourth property of parallelogram. So that is diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So for our given parallelogram LOBE with diagonals LB and OE, and we would like to prove that line segment LS is congruent to line segment PS as well as line segment ES is congruent to line segment OS. So let's refer our, for our illustration on the right side. For our statement number one, so we have parallelogram LOBE with diagonals line segment LB and line segment E. So that is actually given for our reason number one. Number two is line segment LO is congruent to line segment BE because opposite sides of parallelogram are congruent. For number three, line segment LO is parallel to line segment BE because it is actually the definition of parallelogram. Moving on for the fourth statement, angle 1 is congruent to angle 4 as well as angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. The reason is if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. Let's move on to, okay, Number five, statement number five. So we can form the triangle LOS is congruent to triangle DES. The reason is we have angle side angle or ASA congruence postulate. And we have here number six. Therefore, we can say that line segment LS is congruent to line segment PS as well as Line segment ES is congruent to line segment OS because we have corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Let's move on to the PIP property of parallelogram. So that is, each diagonal of parallelogram divides the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. So we have again the parallel parallelogram LOBE with diagonal LB. So we would like to prove that triangle LEB is congruent to triangle BOL. So again, for our statement number one, we have parallelogram LOBE with diagonals LB and the reason is given. For number two, we have line segment LO is congruent to line segment PE as well as line segment OB is parallel to line segment LB. And our reason is we have definition of parallelogram. For number three, we have angle ELB is congruent to angle OBL. Our reason is if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, 
then the alternate interior angles are congruent. For our statement number four, we have line segment LB is congruent to uh, line segment BL. So we can use the reflexive property for our reason. Statement number five, so we have angle EBL is congruent to angle OLB. Our reason is, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. And finally, we have triangle LEVE is congruent to triangle BOL. Our reason is the angle side angle or ASA congruence posture. Now that we are done on proving properties of parallelogram, so let's move on to application. Let's consider application number one. CARE is a parallelogram with the measure of angle A is equal to 140 degrees. Find the measure of each of the other angles. So this is our illustration. So take note that the measure of angle A is congruent to measure of angle E. So, because opposite angles are congruent in a parallelogram. Now, that we know that measure of angle E is equal to 140 degrees, it follows that, okay, measure of angle A plus measure of angle C is equal to 180 degrees because consecutive angles are supplementary. From that, we can say we can substitute to the measure of angle A is equal to 140 degrees plus the measure of angle C is equal to 180 degrees. Solving for the measure of angle C, so I can subtract both sides by 140 degrees. So measure of angle C is equal to 40 degrees. Also that the measure of angle C is equal to or congruent to the measure of angle R because opposite angles are congruent in a parallelogram. So it follows that, okay, measure of angle R is also 40 degrees. So let's consider problem number two. Given SELF is a parallelogram, if S is equal to 5X minus 5 and LF is equal to 4X plus 1, find SE. So again, so we will start with SE is congruent to line segment LF because opposite sides are congruent in the parallelogram. So given that SE is equal to 5x minus 5, so this is the same as okay, LF which is equal to 4x plus 1. So solving for x, so we can put together the variables as well as the numbers. So we have, if we will subtract both sides by 4x as well as Add both sides by the five uh, by five, we can have five x minus four x is equal to one plus five. So we have x is equal to six. So that is the value of x. However, we want to find out the SE. So SE is equal to simply substitute the given or the value of x with five x minus five. So that is why five times six minus five is equal to twenty-five units. Okay, so let's move on to application number three. Given parallelogram HEAR, if RE is equal to 36 centimeters and measure of angle ARH is equal to 70 degrees, find the line segment ET and measure of angle EHR. So let's start with, okay, ET is congruent to one half RE because diagonals bisect each other. So again, so ET is equal to one half of 36, so this is equal to 18 centimeter, centimeters. Next, we would like to find out the measure of angle EHR. So take note that the measure of angle ARH plus measure of angle EHR is equal to 180 degrees because that is consecutive angles are supplementary in parallelogram okay or quadrilateral so we have okay we have 70 we simply substitute the measure of angle a r h which is equal to 70 degrees 
plus the measure of angle EHR is equal to 180 degrees. If you add if I subtract both sides by 70 degrees. So come up with, okay, measure of angle EHR is equal to 110 degrees. Let's move on to fourth application. So we have quadrilateral PLAN is a parallelogram. If LN is equal to 7x minus 3 and SN is equal to 3x plus 1, Find the value of X as well as the line segment SL. Again, so we have SN is e congruent to 1 half LN. So, because diagonals bisect each other. So, substitute the value of SN which is equal to 3X plus 1. While the value of LN is equal to 7X minus 3. If I multiply both sides of the equation by 2, so I come up with... 2 times 3x will give us 6x, and 2 times 1 is equal to 2, leaving only 7x minus 3 on the right-hand side. So simplifying it further, so put together the variables. So we, I have here 7x minus 6x is equal to 2 plus 3, so the value of x is equal to 5. Since I want to find out the value of SL, take note that SL is congruent to SN. So we have SL is the same as the length of, okay, your SN, which is equal to 3x plus 1. So I'll substitute that one with 3x plus 1. So we have 3 times 5 plus 1. So we have SL is equal to 16 units. Let's move on to the PIP application. If measure of angle PLM is equal to 55 degrees and the measure of angle PNL is equal to 65 degrees. Find the measure of angle NAL. So take note that the measure of angle LPN is equal to 180 degrees minus the sum of the measure of angle PLN as well as angle PNL. So the reason is this is the sum of the interior angles of a triangle. So, which is equal to 180 degrees. By simply substituting the value of 55 degrees and 65 degrees for the measure of angle PLN as well as angle PNL, so we come up with the measure of angle LPN is equal to 60 degrees. However, we would like to find the measure of angle NAL, but take note that the measure of angle NAL is congruent to the measure of angle LPN. So therefore, we can say that the measure of angle NAL is equal to 60 degrees. So that ends our topic on proving properties of parallelogram. Again, this is Teacher on de Guzman. So do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified about my new videos. Thank you and have a nice day.